Today we're doing a list of the top 11 worst animation cliches because no one is immune to them. Let's establish a few ground rules first. While I am going to have a lot of focus on movies in general, I am also going to be giving some focus to animated television because that's also fallen into formula as of late, if my big mouth review didn't give that away a little bit. On top of that, I am only focusing on western animation. I don't watch enough anime to really gauge cliches and overused tropes that anime suffers from. I think that this list is kind of a necessary evil. I want to get this all out of my system so it doesn't continually bog down my reviews in the future. And you have to keep in mind that many of the things I'm going to talk about, they aren't exclusive to animation, but they're far more frequent in animated movies and television. And for a final rule, I'm going to ignore trends that have largely died, like animated movies obsessively trying to save the rainforest. With that being said, let's rip these cliches a new one and hope that they die for good. You know, when you get down to it, the best place to start this video really is at the end. And nowadays, there's only one way that you're allowed to end an animated film, and that's a dance party ending. I'm sure that this one isn't annoying to only me, and many people might have expected it somewhere higher on the list. The dance party ending, from what I can tell, started with Shrek, like many of the worst trends of the industry. And since then, every animated film ever feels like they need to end with all their characters dancing to one last song to pad out the soundtrack. The biggest problem is when it really comes across like the writers don't actually know how to end their story and just go into random dancing, like it's a kid's sitcom from the 90s. The other problem is that everyone dancing has basically become shorthand for everyone is happy in this ending, you know, until the sequel four years later. We don't need to go through the effort of actually showing these characters and the new lives they lead. They're so devoid of conflict that they could just drop everything they're doing and go dancing. I get that with DreamWorks it's tradition at this point, but it's just legions of imitators that have sunk this below tolerability. If you want to wow me with your unique ways your character moves, you should have gotten to that earlier in the movie. And it's always to some pop song that immediately dates the movie, which can be quite jarring if it's otherwise timeless, and has a message that's supposed to resonate throughout the ages. I can only justify this being at number 11 because it is at the end, and it usually doesn't affect my enjoyment of the overall product. Unlike... I've gone on and on about this one, especially in my top 20 worst opening themes list, so I'll try to keep it short. There have been literally thousands of cartoons to air in the meantime, and the only one of these that managed to pull off a rapping theme song is Danny Phantom, and it's kind of a scenario where the exception proves the rule about how hard it is. Simply put, you cannot make this work. It's always awkward, forced, and stupid. It always reeks of marketing hacks. And it is never made by someone who actually knows how to rap, or even has any decent flow. It's always an immediate attempt to cash in on pop culture trends. When Hammerman, as someone who actually raps, couldn't get it down, what hope does some poor writer sitting in an office who doesn't know what an MP3 is have? It's nothing inherently wrong with the genre. Theoretically, it's possible to make it work. The problem is that the genre seems to be attractive to the marketing hacks that want to be edgy, or grant their show or characters edginess. What puts this higher than the dance party ending is that even if it's for a good show, you've got to get through this stupid, awful theme song every time you want to watch a new episode. And it's just obnoxious. When it comes to animation aimed at adults, I often get the impression that it doesn't want to be animation, because it seems like they never put any effort into the visuals. We have people made of very simple shapes with no dynamic posing, standing with half elated expressions just staring at each other, just talking about things that cartoons who actually wanted to be a cartoon would be animating. Most adult cartoons look like absolute trash. The problem is that it's the standard, the default, and I don't really understand why. King Star King and Mr. Pickles went another way to be as ugly as possible, consistently, and not in an interesting way either. Alan Gregory almost didn't even try to be animated. And do I even need to bring up cartoons like 12 Ounce Mouse? Animation requires money. If you don't want to spend the money, don't make the animation. Not to mention that every episode of Family Guy costs one million dollars. Makes those dad noises jokes just hurt a little bit more, don't they? The problem gets even more crazy when you realize that it's in the good adult cartoons too. 
The animation is the worst part of BoJack Horseman, for instance, even back in Season 1. When I originally brought this up, people had given me counterexamples, like the Boondocks and Black Dynamite. And yes, those shows are well animated. The problem is that one is 5 years old and the other one is 10 years old, and neither one of them are making new episodes. I hear a lot of people bring up Archer as an exception. Archer is a little bit different, but that's because it has well-designed characters. The animation itself, the movements of those characters, is actually rather poor. It often looks like they're moving well-drawn cutouts in the earlier seasons, because the movements are stiff and the angles don't change. I get that the impression of being an adult is that the world is all edgy and ugly, so there's a temptation to make the animation for adults as edgy and ugly as possible. But that impression is actually something you outgrow when you actually become an adult. And honestly, the shit animation in most adult cartoons does give me the impression that they're so painfully immature. And once again, not wanting to be a cartoon. Why is every single adult cartoon a comedy? Actually, no, comedies have variety. An animation aimed at adults that isn't anime or the Samurai Jack reboot, it's always a comedy. Just naming the most famous ones off the top of my head, South Park, Robot Chicken, The Simpsons, Family Guy, Archer, Bob's Burgers, Rick and Morty, Futurama. While some of them have subgenres, Rick and Morty and Futurama are also science fiction shows, they're all primarily a comedy. Even worse, they seem to follow one of two templates. The South Park template, or the Family Guy slash Simpsons template. Robot Chicken is an exception. I can boil down 95% of adult cartoons to trying to be like South Park or The Simpsons or Family Guy. This even seeps into shows that I absolutely love. Bojack Horseman felt the need to disguise itself as a Family Guy style show to get anyone invested. Rick and Morty feels the need to have Beth and Jerry. When you come down to it, this is probably the most damaging thing to the reputation of television animation. It's common for adults to assume that animation is a genre like, say, westerns. It's not. Animation is a medium. But it's hard to blame the general public when every single fucking cartoon aimed at adults is interchangeable. There is one exception to this, it seems, the Samurai Jack reboot. But I, I don't really count that in this trend because it's based on a pre-existing franchise and it understand that its previous audience had had grown up over the years. I'm guessing that the only thing that's stopping anyone from trying their own adult animated action series or film noir or fantasy is that Fox, Comedy Central, Adult Swim, they're scared. They don't want to take chances on this. And it seems like people are craving something new. At least I am. Bojack Horseman did prove that people want something more insightful. People loved its deeper later seasons and absolutely hated the lowbrow first few episodes. There are so many possibilities that adult animation is keeping itself restricted from. The Disney Live Action Remakes. I'm cheating a little bit, but at this point, it is a cliché. It's no secret that Disney has gotten a love affair with remaking their animated films in live action. Alice in Wonderland, The Jungle Book, Mulan, The Little Mermaid, Aladdin, Peter Pan, and Beauty and the Beast. And this would go on forever if I just listed them all. Just assume that Disney is remaking every single movie that they've ever made as a mediocre live action whatever. You know, except for Black Cauldron or other movies that kind of deserve to be remade into something decent. Disney is making a live action version of the Chernabog moment of Fantasia. Fantasia was a movie that was was designed from the ground up specifically to set animation to classical music. That was the point of the film. Many of the movies they're remaking are less than 25 years old, which is just absolutely absurd to me. The most different version was Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland, and it's gotten many detractors, and most people seem to prefer the original because the new one is too different. The most similar version was Beauty and the Beast, and people seem to prefer the original because they find the remake pointless, and it's not different enough. What's new here? Making a remake and getting good critical consensus to match the original is a battle that you can't seem to win. If you go in the same direction, if you go in a different direction, it's a hard fight. Hopefully in 2019, we can actually stop this Mickey Mouse Protection Act shit. The Butt Monkey, the Megward the Wizard, the Jerry, the Oscar, whatever you want to call them. 
They're all the targets for abuse on this show. After you've seen the same exact thing happen to Squidward before in another episode, what reaction could you get this time, besides it being boring or cringeworthy? As for butt monkeys like Meg, whenever she gets abused, it usually feels arbitrary. She'll be thrown randomly into an episode or scene just to get crapped on, even if she appears nowhere else in the episode. And it's not funny there either. Stressed Eric is one of my top 10 least favorite shows of all time because it's built on this principle. Something bad happens to Eric. That is the basis of every single joke in the show. And before long, it gets tedious. Jerry has some depth on Rick and Morty, but I know that the world is just going to crap on him in every opportunity. And thus, every time he's on the screen, all I'm thinking is, get off the screen so we can spend some time with the interesting people. Episodes trying to be funny that continually torment one character often end up more horrifying. You end up feeling sorry for these characters, and it can even end up tarnishing your view of the rest of the cast, as they callously go out of their way to beat up this poor, innocent person. Not to mention that this trope found itself in many, many shows of the late 2000s and early 2010s that love to use the two douchebags annoy someone relentlessly formula. Animation Parents. If I wanted to list each trope individually, it would take up half of this list. It happens a lot in shows that have gone on way too long. You get characters like Mr. and Mrs. Turner in the later seasons, who gleefully throw their hatred of having a son in Timmy's face. I talked a lot about the dumbass dad trope, and it's especially painful animation. I swear, it's like a standard writing rule. You capitalize the first letter in every sentence, and you gotta make sure you make your fathers act like idiots. It's just how it's done. It's even worse in adult animation. The Simpsons, Marge is a nag and Homer is a dumbass. The couple from Committed, nag and dumbass. Glenn Martin, nag and dumbass. Family Guy, worse than a dumbass and worse than a nag. I like many of these shows, but it's always something that I end up respecting a show less for. For movies, what do you get? We've got Jasmine's father, who was a dumbass. We've got Judy Hopp's parents, who are closed-minded awful. Remy's father, from Ratatouille, who is closed-minded. Jack Black's shark father, who is closed-minded. While many of the movies that I have mentioned are fantastic, like Ratatouille or How to Train Your Dragon, I'm not going to be kind to any movies using the same fucking template over and over again. <laughs> Once again, I've ranted on this in a recent review, so I don't want to go too far into it. But to give you an overview, I'm sick and tired of cartoons and animated movies breaking stereotypes in the laziest way possible, usually just from marketing or social brownie points. You've probably heard of one of these characters before, I'm sure. They added a female character because they didn't want to be accused of being sexist for not having a female character, but they don't know what to do with her, so they make her loud and obnoxious about being a girl. She doesn't fall into stereotypes. She's a tomboy, and she loves sports. You know, like every other fucking tomboy stereotype in media history. Then you have characters like the Powerpuff Girls in the reboot. It ends up getting kind of awkward when they repeatedly get captured and beaten and aren't allowed to fight like the boys. They tried to break the stereotype of men can't be sexually harassed, but ended up saying that it was okay for a woman to rape a man if she was lonely. These kind of characters are not breaking stereotypes, they're just trading old stereotypes for new ones. What these shows think is progressive ends up basically walking us in an entire circle. This is so high on the list because it usually breaks the overall point of what you're trying to convey. How good is representation of any minority if that person ends up being a stereotypical portrayal of that minority? That's the most common way for this thing to happen. It's why Brian's cousin Jasper was so viciously hated. And yes, I know that this is a problem that many, many media have, but like I said, animation is particularly good at exaggeration, so the problem is much, much worse here. They end up creating an ideal that ends up being impossible for any reasonable human being to live up to, and once again creates new stereotypes, new conflicts, and it doesn't end up helping the matters of representation in the slightest. Every animated movie ever needs a comic relief character, even if it doesn't belong in the movie. It's strange because people go on and on about how much they hate stupid comic relief characters. And yet these stupid comic relief characters keep coming on in every single movie. The Chicken from Moana, the Minions from Despicable Me, the Gargoyles from Hunchback, High Five from the Emoji Movie, Mater from Cars. I hate this cliche so much because of what it represents. The worst of this example comes from people who treat animation as a genre, not a medium. It's a kid's comedy, and so we need laughs within it. 
The Force comic relief is always the sidekick or best friend, and that's also becoming obnoxious. And most of these movies that shoe on in a comic relief, they don't seem to know how to write comedy well. Especially because, well, many of these movies shouldn't have even attempted comedy. This is why people were so apprehensive of Frozen when they unveiled Olaf before the movie even came out. Luckily, Olaf managed to be one of the more tolerable examples, although he still has his moments. You can make shock humor work. You can't make Minions ripoffs work. It's always the same shtick. In the modern era, we've got characters like Hans and Bellwether, both characters that are the worst parts of their respective movie. And this bugs the hell out of me. Do you want to know why Disney villains of the past are so memorable and why the modern ones, well, aren't? It's because we have to spend the whole movie with them. We learn about them and their hopes and desires like we should for any character. It's not reserved for just the good guys. And that's if you discount the Pixar films, Toy Story 3, Up, and Cars 2. It wasn't a surprise and I was fully expecting them to have a twist villain. When the twist villain is done poorly, it's either absurdly obvious like in the Emoji movie or in Cars 2, or it feels like something added in the last drafts, like with Hands and Frozen. Sooner or later, a movie that uses these tropes will win my ire, even if the movie is otherwise technically fine. It feels like the movie made their villain a twist villain, so they could actually get out of spending time and effort, well, writing a villain. It was clever on Wreck-It Ralph, the one that really kicked off this trend, but that's because we got to know King Candy as a villain halfway through. Not the very end of the film. And honestly, Rekka Ralph and King Candy is getting to be a kind of a, a South Park kind of deal, where I hate that it was done so well because now it seems like Disney won't stop fucking doing it. The best example I can think of is Jack Silver from Treasure Planet. He's technically a twist villain, but only technically. It's pretty obvious to the audience that he's a bad guy. We get to know Jack Silver's debate, wanting the treasure, but also wanting to take care of and not use this kid he's forced to watch. Compare him to Hands. Great, everything that I knew about him was a lie and I need to start over where he's basically just a generic evil guy with a plan. That, that makes him so memorable. And now because I only had 11 numbers and there are literally thousands of potential candidates, here's some honorable mentions. <laughs> All animated movies must be 3D, unless they're based on a TV show. All stop-motion movies must be creepy or horror. Memes! Twins acting exactly the same or cartoon episodes taking on the clones plot. The two douchebags cartoon, keeping the same voice in a body swap episode. Gross out and shock humor. Memes! Movies about what your whatever does when you're not looking. It wasn't even original when Toy Story did it. Refusing to age up your characters. DreamWorks face. Also, we should probably throw in every single animated trailer being exactly the same. And, and I guess we should also throw in Shrek. Just everything about Shrek. Also, we should probably throw in memes. And now, without further ado. I'm not even gonna try to be hesitant or funny or whatever when I say that the worst trope in animation is the fake-out death. I don't think that I have to describe this one in any detail. There is no reason to even try and attempt this anymore. Not even for comedy, because it's long past the point of being funny. Animated movies have always done this because, yeah, this is probably the oldest trope on the list. After all, we've been seeing this since Snow White when it comes to animated films. This is number one on the list, not because of how prevalent or how cheap or lazy it is. It is number one on the list because I think they're gonna do actual harm. It would make it a lot harder for a child to deal with the idea of death when they're eventually forced to deal with it. It would not make it easier. If a child had someone in their life that was dying, watching these movies back to back would confuse them at best or give them a false hope at worst that someone might finally cure that terminally ill family member at the last moment. If they have had someone die, especially recently, this trope might piss them off. Any movie that tries to pull this stunt off should quite frankly be ashamed of itself. 